superconductivity, uh, two papers that uh, appeared uh, uh, almost simultaneously on the archive. And so we will have uh, both the speakers from the two groups to present uh, their work. And uh, we start with uh, Yu Hamada. And um, so the seminar is half an hour. And um, so please, uh, you, it's, uh, it's your turn. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Yu Hamada. I'm a PhD student at Kyoto University. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving this opportunity. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about electric action string and its superconductivity. And this talk is based on the collaboration with Abe-san and Yoshioka-san. Okay, let's get started. Okay. Um, one of the uh, problems in the standard model of particle physics is the strong CP problem. So it's a kind of fine tuning problem. Uh, in principle, the QCD Lagrangian allows the following CP violating term. Uh, and here, theta, uh, theta is a free CP violating parameter. But experiments of neutron electric dipole moment indicate this very small value, uh, which means uh, theta should be less than the 10 to the minus 10. So the problem is that uh, why theta is so small? This is a uh, strong CP problem. And one of the natural solutions is the so-called uh, Pecheku mechanism, where we introduce a chiral symmetry denoted by U1PQ. And this symmetry is spontaneously broken. And then uh, Namb Goldson boson appears, called, uh, which is called action. And the effective theta parameter becomes a dynamical field. And it goes to zero. So the strong CP problem is uh, solved. And there are two popular models. Uh, producing uh, such an action. One is the case with model, where we introduce extra heavy clock and singlet complex scale. And the other is the DFSZ model, where we introduce two Higgs tablets denoted by H1 and H2, and uh, one singlet complex scale S. And in this talk, uh, we focus on this uh, DFSD model. <clears throat> and one interesting object uh, appearing in action physics, action model, is the action string, which is a global vortex string associated with the UMPQ symmetry breaking. So let's uh, assume that the UMPQ symmetry is broken by a uh, web of a complex scalar phi like this. And the action string is described by the, follow by the following string-like configuration, like this. So here, the phase of phi is identified with the spatial angle theta around the string. And the phase uh, winds the vacuum once. So when one goes around this string, uh, theta uh, varies from 0 to 2 pi, and it winds this uh, vacuum once. So this configuration is a topologically non trivial configuration. And the action strings are produced in the early universe by the Kibbutzorek mechanism. And they form a network, uh, which is called string network. And this picture is, uh, uh, is the, uh, uh, sorry, this shows the picture of a string network. And the energy of the strings does not overcross the universe if the strings lose energy by reconnection. So this picture is a, a schematic uh, picture for the reconnection of the strings. So uh, here the string, uh, one string, uh, collide uh, with uh, itself. And when the reconnection occurs, a small string loop uh, pro is produced like this. 
and this small loop radiates action and gravitational waves. And so this small loop uh, shrinks and uh, disappears. So this, so the string, uh, so the uh, string loses energy by this reconnection process. As a result, uh, the ratio, of, uh, the ratio of the energy density of string and photon remains constant. So the string does not uh, overcross the universe. So here, uh, the efficiency of the reconnection process is very important. It is so. Uh, it should be sufficiently large to avoid the overclosure. Actually, it has been believed that action strings always reconnect when they collide. Uh, this is a pic schematic picture for the uh, reconnection of the action strings. Here, red, red line and blue lines are uh, action strings with winding number one, winding number unity. And let's consider they uh, uh, and they collide like this, and they always reconnect like this. This is the uh, reconnection process between the strings. However, they can form a bound state called Y junction when there is a strong attractive force between them. So this is a picture for the Y junction. Uh, which is a bound state of the two strings. So here, blue and uh, red ones are the uh, action strings. And here, this green region it has winding number two. So which means uh, these two action strings are glued on this uh, green region. So this is a bound state of two strings. And in this case, the reconnection process does not work. So this is very um, problematic process for the uh, string network. And the question is that such an attractive force is realized for action strings. The answer is yes. The point is that uh, sometimes Act strings, uh, cosmic strings can be superconducting state when the U1 electromagnetic symmetry is broken inside the string. This is called superconducting string. And in the superconducting string, the electric current flows uh, along the string without resistance. So this is a picture for the uh, superconducting string, and the red one is a cosmic string, and the U1 element symmetry is spontaneously broken inside this string. So this string is a superconducting object, and the electric current uh, flows along this uh, superconducting string. And the, this electric current can induce a magnetic attractive force, attractive uh, interaction between the strings. Uh, resulting in the Y junction. So this is uh, this is the mechanism we uh, we we use in the following. This is the message the messages of my talk. So in the following, I will show that uh, action strings in DFSZ action model have complicated structures after the electric symmetry breaking and we call them electric action string. And the electric, uh, electric action string can be superconducting strings containing large electric current, and which results in uh, Y junction. So uh, the reconnection process might not work in the DFSC model. This is a uh, main message of my talk. Okay, this is the plan of my talk, and uh, I have done the introduction. And in the next section, I will explain the electric action string in the DFC model. And after that, I will uh, discuss the superconductivity of electric action string. Okay, let, okay. <clears throat> let's move to uh, electric action string. 
in this talk, I, uh, we consider the two uh, DFSZ action model, where we have we introduced two Higgs subways, H1 and H2, and one singlet complex scale S. And this is the scalar potential for the scalar fields. And VH is the Higgs potential, and VS is the uh, potential for the complex scale S. And V mix is the uh, mixing terms for the uh, scalar fields like this. And we assume the uh, non zero waves for these scalar fields like this. And due to this portal coupling, um, uh, so in order to keep this term uh, invariant under the UMPQ symmetry, we have, we have to assign the UMPQ charge as this table. Here, beta is defined by this, uh, defined by the ratio of the uh, two Higgs waves. And thanks to this assign, uh, th thanks to this uh, assignment of the UMPQ charge, there is no mixing term between the action and Z boson. Okay, let us first consider the conventional action swing in the DFS model. And let's assume that the UMPQ symmetry is spontaneously broken but the electric symmetry is not broken. Namely, uh, let's assume that the temperature of the universe is much larger than the electric scale, but uh, less than the UMP uh, pitch queen scale. And in this situation, the Higgs doublets acquire no waves like this. So the complex scale, only the complex scale has a uh, winding phase. So the uh, action swing consists of this complex scale S. This is just a uh, conventional action swing. Next, let's assume that the electric symmetry is also broken. That is, the temperature is less than the electric scale. Then the Higgs doublets also acquire non-zero waves and the Higgs subjects must have winding phases. As a result, uh, due to these winding phases, uh, the electroweak gauge flux appears uh, outside the action stream. So this is a schematic, schematic picture for uh, our statement. Here we start from the uh, conventional action swing and then electroweak symmetry is broken and then um, electric gauge flux appears outside, outside the action swing. So we have two, uh, two typical scales. One is the UMPQ scale. Uh, one is the pitch queen scale, uh, which is for the, uh, which is the typical width of the string core, string core region. And the other is electric scale which is a typical width of this uh, electric flux tube. And we call this complicated uh, object el the electric action swing. And uh, there are three types of the electric action swings depending on the one new patterns of the Higgs fields, which we call type A, B, and C. And in this talk, uh, because of the time constraint, I will not explain the type B electric action swing. I will mention only on type A and C ones. And the most important one is the type C one, type C electric action swing, because it can become, it can become a superconducting swing, as I will explain. Okay, we first consider the type A electric action swing. We are the complex scale S is the same as the previous one. And here the Higgs doublets H1 and H2 have one new phases like this. And 
we can decompose these winding phases into two parts. <clears throat> uh, recalling that we have assigned the U1 peak charge like this table, uh, this blue part means uh, the means the uh, winding for the U1PQ symmetry. U1PQ, uh, yeah, winding for the U1PQ symmetry. And this orange part uh, for the winding in the U1Z symmetry, which is a subgroup of the electric symmetry, uh, electric symmetry. And Z means uh, um, U1Z gauge boson. So this configuration has Two winding number, two uh, two winding numbers. One is for the U1 peak winding, and the other is for the uh, U1Z winding. And due to this winding for the U1Z symmetry, there must be the uh, non-zero Z gauge field like this. And Z gauge field and this gauge field uh, cancels the gradient energy from this. Uh, winding phases. As a result, uh, this Z gauge flux appears outside of this uh, thin uh, swing core. And the, the, this Z flux is fractionally quantized as this quantity. So this is the type, type A electric action swing. And, uh, and uh, I skip I, uh, yeah, and the next is the type C electric action swing. And this, uh, and which is described by this uh, field configuration. And here S is the same as the previous one. And the two Higgs doubles H1, they still have this, uh, these expressions. And uh, they seem uh, uh, somehow uh, exotic because this winding embedding is very non-trivial, but we can decompose this configuration into three parts. And again, one is one, uh, these blue parts for the winding in the u peak symmetry, and these orange parts for the winding in U1Z symmetry. And the third one is for the U1W1 winding. W1 means, uh, uh, means uh, sigma one, uh, rotation around around the vacuum. So this configuration has three winding numbers: U on PQ, U on Z, and U on W. And this uh, configuration contains uh, Z gauge flux and W one gauge flux. So this string configuration is very uh, complicated. So there is one thing: uh, action string core, whose typical scale is U and uh, pitch queen scale and and there are Z and W gauge flux outside the core region like this. So they uh, so it has it have uh, two structures. Okay so far I have explained the electric action swing and in the next section I will and discuss the superconductivity of electric action string. And let's consider the type C string. In the type C string, the U1 electromagnetic symmetry is broken. To see, uh, to see this fact, uh, we should use the smeared ansatz for the type C string, like this. Here, uh, R is the distance uh, from the string core and uh, F and H are the, uh, regular functions. And, and uh, their detailed uh, expression, uh, the detailed shapes are determined by solving uh, the uh, equation of motion. And this is, this figure shows the plot for the uh, profile of F and H. And this blue one is uh, F and this uh, orange one is H. And let's act the generator of U1 element symmetry on these two Higgs fields. 
then we obtain this quantity f minus h and this quantity approaches to zero uh, at large distances from the, from the string like this however this is not uh, this is uh, not zero inside the string because uh, f goes to zero but h does not which means that the u mark symmetry is spontaneously broken inside the type c string so the type c strings can be a superconducting state because the u mark symmetry is broken and thanks to the superconductivity we can uh, uh, thanks to the superconductivity the electric current can are uh, can flow along the type c strings and let's consider the two uh, superconducting uh, type c strings and they and let's assume that they have uh, electric uh, large electric current and here uh, and then there is a magnetic interaction which is induced by this electric current between the two strings and so there arises a attractive force between these two superconducting strings and whose uh, amount is given by this expression and here r is the distance from the two strings on the other hand the action induced interaction is repulsive force between the between these uh, string, these strings and this means this magnetic interaction is comparable with the actual uh, repulsive interaction so the magnet, this magnetic interaction can dominate the string interaction and it could affect the rec reconnection process for the strings so especially uh, by this attractive force between two strings and uh, the, the so-called white junction could be formed and so it it could spoil the reconnection process between the action strings this is very uh, problematic uh, possibility okay this is a summary of my talk i have shown that the DF, dfc action string becomes dressed with electric gauge fluxes after the electric symmetry breaking uh, we call them electric action strings and the type c electric action string breaks u1 element symmetry and can be a superconducting string and the strings feel the attractive force uh, due to this superconductivity and could form y junctions which is a bound which is a bound state of the strings so uh, this causes uh, uh, this provides a problematic possibility that is uh, these y junctions or this superconductivity superconduct could spoil the scaling behavior of the string network and overcross the universe so this is very uh, important uh, future work. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, you. So there is time for questions. Uh, okay, so let me ask one question. Yes. So um, in order for the rip, uh, attractive force uh, to be comparable to the, uh, the uh, tension of the string, the current must be as large as the uh, scale of the uh, action string of order, I mean, of order, the DK constant of the action. But the, yes. uh, yeah. typically in the early universe, the uh, current on the superconducting string cannot be so large, I think. Uh, how, 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 you, how do you can, how do you, uh, maintain such a large current on the current uh, on the string. Uh, you mean uh, the large electric current can leak off the string? Yeah, I, I mean it, it is known that like uh, 
in, in the context of superconducting string, uh, if let's say cusp is formed, the current is leaked as the electromagnetic radiation, mm -hmm. uh, generally mm -hmm. or uh, or even kind of more naively, uh, that current uh, should be a water temperature. So it seems to me it's much smaller than the uh, DK constant. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, I have ignored the leakage of the uh, current from the stream. And so, but, uh, but I, I have assumed that there is a primordial magnetic field. So, uh, <laughs> well, yes. yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if, even with the magnetic field, I think uh, the current can't be as large as uh, if a, 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 mm. but yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are there other questions? So I have a, a very simple question. Yes. yes. The, the strings could only become superconducting after the electroweak phase transition. Is that uh, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, as I have shown, uh, there are three types of uh, strings after the electric symmetry breaking. And uh, the answer is that the, the most the most light string is realized. I mean, uh, we, uh, I mean, we have three types of the strings, and this is the uh, plot for the tension string tension for the three strings. And uh, and uh, this is that uh, sorry. Uh, the relation of the tensions depends on the parameter uh, the parameter of the model, and in this parameter space. Uh, the type C string, which is a superconducting one, is the most stable string. So the super, so the string becomes superconducting after the, the electric string. But in the other parameter space, uh, the superconducting one is not the most stable. So in this case, the string string becomes uh, uh, not superconducting one. So it depends on the parameters in the model. So what is beta one, beta two, and beta three in particular? Ah, sorry, beta one—they are the parameters in the Higgs potential, like okay, um, like this. Yeah, but beta one, two, and three. And here, I have defined a uh, one parameter, uh, which is uh, this. Uh, which consists of these three ones. Mm -hmm. And we have taken this parameter as a pre-parameter and we have uh, investigated the, uh, the parameter dependence of the swing tensions. So can you connect uh, this range of uh, the parameters beta, uh, for instance, with the uh, some structure of the um, of the Higgs potential, how you achieve the fine tuning uh, to get the light Higgs, uh, things like that. Sorry, uh, could you say again? Uh, I was wondering whether there was a correlation between uh, um, a region for alpha three that uh, where you develop, uh, um, for instance, a type C strings mm -hmm. that corresponds to to some size uh, for these couplings beta, one, mm. uh, beta two, beta three, that mm. enter the scalar potential. Mm. And the scalar potential is subject um, at least to some constraints like uh, lowering the Higgs boson mass uh, down to the electric scale via tuning. Mm. I was wondering whether there was uh, a correlation uh, in, this, uh, in this step or there's freedom to to have uh, a light Higgs and still you can move uh, in alpha three without any problem. Um, um, I I have tuned. I, um, I have uh, in in this in this study I have tuned these parameters by uh, I I have used fine tuning. So 
Uh, so I, I um, so yeah. So, um, you have already tuned the X mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah, saying yeah. when you do, okay, so yeah. they are basically unconstrained. There's no physics yeah. that uh, constraints from the scalar potential these uh, values. Yeah. Okay. So I don't see other questions. In that case, we switch to the second speaker. And uh, of course, we thank uh, you for the nice seminar. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. So next speaker yes, okay. is uh, Hashime, and uh, please, uh, um, we can talk, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, I'm Hajime Fukuda uh, from uh, UC Berkeley. And uh, today I'm going to talk about our recent work on uh, stating that the action strings are superconducting. So the archive number is here. And uh, also I wrote some, some, some related paper but uh, this is theoretical, but uh, if you want, uh, you can also refer to uh, this paper as well. So uh, let me start from the uh, introduction. But, uh, so uh, start from the introduction of QC action, but uh, hopefully uh, all of you know, already know that uh, what is QC action. So uh, let me rather uh, summarize uh, my notation and uh, introduce the uh, Lagrangian of the action. So, as you know, the QCD action is a hypothetical particle uh, denoted by a scalar particle. And uh, uh, that particle had the uh, periodicity. So uh, in terms of the A over FA, here FA is the cutoff scale of the QCD action uh, called DK constant. Uh, this A tilde had the uh, two pi periodicity in its field value. And uh, accordingly, uh, the Lagrangian, which is consistent uh, with this periodicity, is something like this, kinetic term plus the coupling between the uh, GG childre and uh, the coupling between the FA children. So coupling between the uh, gluon and uh, GG childre is required to cancel the uh, theta angle in the uh, QCD. And uh, this is the uh, greatest motivation to uh, introduce the uh, QCD action. On the other hand, uh, the coupling between the uh, electromagnetic gauge boson, boson is uh, not required in principle, but uh, usually in constant model, uh, this is also uh, introduced. So uh, this is the Lagrangian of the QC action. And uh, the important, one of the uh, important object in the QCD action is the uh, QCD action string. This is an object around which the action lines shift to 2 pi. So uh, let this uh, gray blur line denote the action string. Then around the action string, the scalar A tilde shift from 0 to 2 pi. So in xy plane, it's something like this. And in our uh, three dimension, it's uh, just like a line object. And uh, uh, it's like something like this. So uh, that's the reason why we call it uh, this action stream. And uh, this action stream is phenomenologically very important. Uh, this is because once the uh, temperature of the universe is higher than the uh, DK constant or the FA, it is known that the numerous streams formed in the universe. And uh, eventually uh, the streams remain Till the uh, QC around the QCD phase transition, and uh, uh, the stream gives that action, and and that's, that produced action from the stream uh, becomes a, a cosmic dark matter. So uh, to to follow the uh, dynamics of that this QCD action stream is very phenomenologically important, and uh, uh, many studies have been performed. So uh, this was the introduction, and uh, let me go to the the uh, what we have done in our paper. So uh, let me then first start from the uh, superconductivity of the action string. Well, uh, now I said that uh, our part, but actually uh, the superconductivity of the action string itself has been known uh, from very old days, 
well, uh, it's 80s, so uh, I'm not sure I can say it's old days, but uh, it is almost uh, from the beginning of the uh, Q3 action study, uh, it has been known that the action string has, it, it's super conductive. Here, uh, this super conductivity of the action string So Ashima, we cannot hear you anymore. Can someone hear him? I guess not. No, we don't hear. Uh... Yeah, you mentioned that you had some problems with the connection. Hmm. So let's wait a bit. But anyway, okay. So yeah. The, uh, by the superconductivity, I mean that uh, if I impose the electric field along with the uh, action string, then the, uh, the tender variable current is proportional to the electromagnetic current. So it's uh, just similar to the, uh, the usual uh, superconducting equation, the long equation. So uh, anyway, uh, this phenomena has been known after all this. But, uh, I understand that uh, this is kind of familiar or a very well-known phenomena. So uh, let me uh, review why uh, the action string is super conductive. So if I would, if I'd be asked uh, why the action string is super conducting, and uh, I had to uh, answer in one word, then I would say like this: uh, the action string is superconducting uh, because of a mass experiment on a string. So what does it mean? So first of all, I, I wrote a Lagrangian of the action like AG tilde, but uh, uh, it is known that in order to produce this ion Lagrangian uh, in the U wave theory, uh, there should be a charged fermion, or uh, for this GG tilde case, it's charged color fermion, uh, much exist in the UV theory. Otherwise, uh, it, it, uh, we cannot do the, uh, this ion language. So uh, this means, so this mass is fermion in the, uh, the fermion in the UV theory. And also, uh, on the string, I uh, mean that uh, usually a uh, string on, on the string or on the, in topological effect, uh, there is a, a kind of, the, the, that point is the uh, singular uh, from the point of view of the IL theory. So in, in other words, the, uh, the theory on the topological effect or theory on the string is rather kind of as some kind of, kind of a UV theory. So uh, because of that, uh, we can expect that uh, the theory on the string is uh, UV theory and uh, the spectrum of the uh, particles on the UV have the on the string have the uh, U as a mass experiment in the UV. So uh, from, from, from this space, I mean that uh, basically we can expect a mass experiment on a QCD string. And uh, because of this uh, masses also charged or color charged fermion on a string, uh, we can say that uh, the superconductivity is real. And from this argument, actually, I, I understand this is asymmetric uh, hand waving, but uh, one can expect that the action strings are rather generically always uh, superconducting. And uh, hey, uh, this is a bit uh, intuitive way to state the uh, superconductivity, but uh, there is actually also the uh, more rigorous uh, mathematical well, I'm not sure uh, we can say the field theory is mathematical, but a uh, mathematical way uh, to speak that, uh, superconductivity. So uh, in the language of the field theory, uh, this argument, the superconductivity, is rephrased as a, uh, what is so-called the anomaly inflow. And uh, uh, also importantly, uh, when, when we use anomaly inflow, uh, what's required is only the IL Lagrangian in a previous intuitive way. 
I see like a UV fermion or a UV theory or something like that, but uh, uh, essentially it is uh, not relevant. But, uh, the idea of Lagrangian action, actually coupling to FFT or FFG uh, is enough to, to prove the, the, the superconductivity. And by using this uh, anomaly flow argument, uh, we can show uh, two interesting facts. Uh, one is that the, uh, the current on the string is strictly chiral. So this chiral current is not very uh, familiar, right? So uh, I explain what is that. So the, the, the word, the current is chiral, that the always charge carrier goes to one direction, uh, left or right. So uh, because of that, the charge density of on the string is always same as the uh, current with the with this is what I mean by current chiral. In the uh, in, in the uh, I can understand that because the UV fermion was chiral, so with the uh, fermion on the and uh, that, so it's a current we carried by the, uh, the, the chiral fermion. So anyway, the current is chiral. And uh, this means that the, the, the string is charged uh, whenever it, it is supported. Charge of the current and effect of the charge. But uh, uh, there is uh, a somewhat similar example, similar well known example. Uh, that is the uh, Witten effect. Actually, uh, we have uh, shown that, uh, that this uh, the charge on the string or the, the fact that action string is charged is similar or kind of, kind of a cousin of the, the Witten effect, the, uh, the charge on the um, electric charge on the uh, monopole. So, uh, 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 for, for my view of the anomaly flow, uh, this charge on the string. Uh, can be understood. And the, the other uh, that is uh, I, I talked about the conductivity in this by from this slide. Uh, but uh, actually uh, as I said uh, what is important is the, the IO interaction of A F field to keep the acid conductivity. So uh, since the, uh, there is an interaction A G G field uh, in the IL. So actually it's the same thing uh, can be proved for QCD color. So we can also say that uh, the, uh, the action string is QCD color. So uh, anyway, this is a well-known fact and uh, uh, action superconductivity. And then now uh, since uh, that it's consequence, the phenomenology has not been discussed. I want to move to the, the phenomenology of the, this superconductivity. But uh, before going to that, that let me first is how uh, the conductivity induced on the string. So of course, I now say that the action string can support the current. But uh, of course, this doesn't mean that action string uh, supports that or there is the current of but uh, one can imagine that the, uh, the current on the action string can be induced by, say, the thermal fluctuation, or uh, we allow the, some, the magnetic field in the Earth universe. Uh, that can also uh, induce the uh, current on the action string. But uh, you know, uh, the ma magnetic field in the Earth universe is optional, so. Uh, we rather focus on the, the first one, the thermal fluctuation, and uh, that we, we first think what happened uh, when we include uh, uh, the current on the action string induced by the uh, thermal fluctuation. Okay, so then uh, I can now go to the, the discuss, I can now discuss the uh, consequence of the, this thermal induced current. And uh, but uh, uh, of course, 
you may wonder if really what I said is consistent. In particular, I mean, I also uh, feel a little bit weird or feel something is wrong uh, when I first heard this story, when I first come up with uh, this kind of story, uh, because uh, the, the charge conservation law uh, is apparently uh, violated. Uh, this is because I said in uh, several uh, slides that the current is chiral and the charge density is always associated to the, uh, the current. So uh, if the current is thermally induced, as my previous slide, then the charge de density is all thermally induced uh, on this stream. And uh, then the, it seems that the, the non-zero charge popped up uh, from nowhere by thermally. And uh, uh, this obviously uh, seems to indicate that uh, the violation of the charge conservation law. And, and, and it, it's reasonable that it's reasonable to wonder uh, something is not consistent. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, if one carefully uh, examines the, uh, the theory, uh, one can find that the charge conservation law is actually not violated. The key point is that the, the the action left by Max. Uh, with the presence of A effective, the acceleration is modified and the uh, divergence of E is no more zero, but the divergence of E is now proportional to the, the some, some, some sort of the current. Uh, this current is derived from the, uh, the chance momentum. So, I think we lost him again. So maybe you, you can uh, continue the discussion. You were mentioning something before. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, want to, I want to comment on the uh, difference between the, uh, our superconductivity and uh, Fukuda-san's superconductivity. So, uh, in his uh, in his talk, uh, he used uh, the uh, anomaly inflow uh, uh, for the super Sorry computer. about that. I'm now <laughs> back again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can continue the discussion uh, after his talk, and uh, of course. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes. 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 I'm really sorry about that. Uh, actually, uh, during his talk, uh, the internet connection was not. Uh, uh, stable, so I assume it's okay, but uh, it's uh, stable now. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, the point is that this uh, Chan Simons current exists, and uh, uh, this Chan Simons current indicates that if the derivative of the action is non zero, then the current is now proportional to the electromagnetic gauge field. Or, in other words, the electromagnetic gauge field is now charged. If their their if partial A is non-zero, and indeed that this derivative of action field is non-zero around the action stream. In, in total, the uh, the charge on the action stream, which is thermal induced, is cancelled by this chance and the, the uh, charge conservation, the total charge conservation is not violated. Okay, so uh, I think I saw uh, some portion of the, uh, the concern. So uh, let me move to the uh, phenomenology. So uh, the phenomenology, uh, we find that uh, two consequences. Uh, one consequence is the, uh, the friction force on the string. So uh, the point is that uh, usually the scattering between the uh, action stream and the, the thermal particle, the particles in thermal path, is uh, not very strong, so that, that the friction is not very uh, strong, and uh, the action stream eventually enters the, uh, the scaling regime, and uh, that determines the, uh, the abundance of the action stream. But uh, the, uh, once uh, we include the current, the friction force to the string by the thermal bus particle 
is enhanced. Uh, but for this point, uh, we found that the, uh, without the magnetic field in the universe, I mean, only, only by the, uh, the thermal induced current, uh, the friction uh, cannot be strong enough so that the, that friction force is, friction force remain till the QC transition. So the, for the uh, thermal current, uh, let, uh, I ignore uh, this enhanced friction force for the time being. And the, the other consequence is that, that uh, the string loop shrinking. So usually uh, we assume that the uh, string loops shrinks to uh, nothing, emitting the action. But then, uh, once the string is charged, uh, we need to modify uh, this picture. And uh, then uh, some uh, stable remnant actually remains. And, and uh, that uh, stable remnant is called the uh, volume. So uh, let me uh, move to the uh, first, the, uh, the volume. So I surely introduce uh, the volume in the slide, uh, but uh, let me uh, discuss more in detail, uh, more in video that the actually nothing. So uh, first, uh, let us assume that uh, the string, the string, the uh, charge is conserved. So uh, this is first assumption. And uh, assuming this, uh, this uh, C, uh, the, uh, the string loop can't shrink to nothing. So uh, usually, uh, the, this again, this gray line denotes the actual string, but uh, the action string loop emit the action to to shrink so uh to include the charge conservation uh let's denote l at the initial length of uh, the the action loop as of order l zero and uh, the initial charge density of the action string as of order rho zero okay so uh as long as uh, this rho zero is smaller then we can expect that the, the dynamics of the string loop is not different from the, uh, the usual case. So uh, the string loop can limit the action to shrink. So then uh, what happens if, say, the, the action loop is shrink by, say, 100? Then, OK, uh, the action, loop, action string loop can shrink to uh, that length, emitting the action. But then now, since we assume that, that the charge conservation, the total charge is something like the length times the charge density. So this L law is conserved. So uh, when the, uh, the size of the string is uh, reduced by 100, then the, uh, charge, the charge density of the string is enhanced by 100. OK, now the loop is shrinked by 100. But then what happens if this loop keep shrinking and let's uh, say then the length of the loop is shrinked by not 100 but say one 10 to 10 or something like that then the just like uh this shrinking case the uh charge density or on the loop is enhanced by uh, 10 to 10. well we can extrapolate this to any further length we want so then we expect that something wrong happened. I mean, the charge density can now increase as much as we want uh, if we assume the charge conservation. So then something is wrong. So uh, we expect that the, the shrinking uh, must stop at some point. And then the, the, the remaining object, the remaining almost stabilized uh, string loop is there. And that is called a uh, bottom. And uh, the bottom is first uh, put, uh, predicted by the, uh, the some different contexts. And uh, also, uh, it has been discussed uh, the similar model to the, uh, the action string. And uh, uh, at least the classical level, uh, this, this phenomena, uh, this stop shrinking phenomena uh, is known to occur. And also, we can use the, some elementary algebra, but uh, let me skip that. So uh, in my previous slide, 
I, I explained that uh, once we assume the uh, charge conservation, then uh, the string group should stop shrinking at some point, and uh, then stable uh, remnant remains. But of course, at the first glance, uh, the, as I said, the charge is not conserved due to chan Simon's color. So the, uh, the charge on the string group seems to be also able to escape from the string group by this chan Simon's color. Schematically, uh, as I said, for the uh, straight string, the Chan Simons current can carry the charge. So, this is uh, what I have discussed in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, previous section. And uh, it is reasonable that one may run a similar thing happen for the action loop. But the uh, point is that uh, for the action loop, well, indeed, the action is buying around the loop. So the chance I was current is zero around the loop. But uh, if we take a loop at the infinity, or uh, if we see the, uh, the action configuration at the infinity, then the uh, configuration of the action field around the loop is trivial. So, uh, Fred, we lost again. So the CC that has the mic on there. Uh, where, 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 where I dis disconnected? Uh, 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 you put the slides we, we back. Slide, we, we slide this one or before? I, I cannot see the slide. Uh, Okay, uh, di did you see this slide? No, does someone can see the slides at the moment? Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Ah, okay, okay. I need to share, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did, you see, did you see this slide? Uh, yes. And uh, did you see this one? Yes, there was another okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, at first glance, the uh, charge, con well, okay. The, uh, at first glance, the charge conservation is not maintained due, the, due to the uh, Chan Simon's current. But, and uh, indeed, for, uh, as I discussed, uh, the, the, for the straight string, the action field winds along the string so that the, the Chan Simon's current is non zero and uh, the charge is not conserved, uh, sorry, on the string. Charge is conserved uh, in total at the string at the Chan Simon's current. But uh, the last loop is home uh, because the action field configuration around the loop, well, around the, each segment of the loop is trivial, not non trivial, but uh, the, around the whole loop is now trivial. Uh, so this means that the Charles Simon's current is zero around the loop, and that the Charles Simon's current can't carry the charge to the infinity from the string loop. Because of that, Uh, I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, uh, anyway. Uh, chance and current can't uh, carry the uh, charge away uh, from the uh, string. Then, uh, the, uh, of course, uh, still uh, we wonder that uh, if the current is really conserved on the charge. Uh, naively, uh,
Is she mad? Are you there? She, she has lost lagging. Yes. <clears throat> I think uh, it's better that someone show his slide other than Fukuda san. Ah, and, that's could have been uh, a good and idea. He, yes. And he switched on only his mic. So it's better. I think. Yeah, on the other end, I think we are over with time. I don't know if it's worth to maybe can just wrap up uh, and. Uh, um, okay. Is, ah, yeah. Ashime, ah, sorry. So we were okay. thinking maybe if you can uh, maybe speed okay. up and um, wrap up to the conclusion so that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if okay. it works. Yeah. I'm finishing five minutes. Yeah, okay. So uh, anyway, uh, if, if one consider that, that string carefully, uh, actually, uh, we need to show that, that there is no upper bound on the current on the stream, and that uh, we and that uh, we 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 think that only the scattering process uh, can let the, uh, the charge leak from the uh, stream loop, and that uh, uh, assuming the case busy model uh, as the scattering process, uh, we assume uh, this sort of process uh, the scattering between time of particle and that uh, goes to the uh, the standard mode particle or the collision between the, uh, the string, the excitation of the string. But uh, anyway, uh, the, this rate is proportional to the, the Yukawa coupling uh, between the, uh, the case with fermium and the standard mode quark. So uh, anyway, uh, we can choose, we can change, uh, we can choose the, uh, the temperature uh, where this uh, the current leakage stops. And uh, the, uh, uh, by, by some Order estimation calculation, uh, we conclude that the, the, this charge leakage stops at the uh, around 100 GB divided by the uh, Yukawa squ inverse square. And then uh, uh, below this temperature, uh, we assume that the Volton forms. So uh, from using this, uh, we estimate the, the Volton abundance. And uh, the, uh, as I said, the, uh, the, the Volton forming temperature uh, depends on the the Yukawa, so we can change that temperature. Uh, but uh, uh, we found that if the uh, the water forming temperature is uh, large, the water abundance uh, becomes uh, very large, even uh, of order the uh, dark matter rate density. And if, if, if it exceeds, it is not no more constant. Okay, so uh, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, so sorry about uh, my poor internet connection. Uh, but let me summarize my talk. So uh, I talked about the, the action string that's conducting. And uh, then as a result, the action loop can leave a stable remnant, Volton. And uh, uh, the Volton abundance can be large. Also, I haven't talked about that, but uh, if the early, in the early universe, uh, the magnetic field exists, the, uh, 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 the abundance of the action field uh, can be different uh, due to the large friction. Okay, so uh, that's all, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So we have um, a bit of time for questions. So, so I have a question. So, um, so in actions from, from string theory, uh, there is no fermions uh, uh, that, ah. that are visible, and uh, still they give rise to KSBZ action. So, okay, how does it work there? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. So. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, the to prove the uh, superconductivity, uh, we only use the IR Lagrangian, uh, IR Lagrangian, this one. So uh, even uh, from the even for, for the uh, string action, uh, this uh, interaction is there. So uh, by this interaction, uh, we can conclude that the uh, even the even if we do not know uh, exactly the UV completion, the action string is uh, super conductive. But the, the, uh, the difference is that uh, in order to uh, discuss, say, the uh, bottom stability or uh, the charge stability on the string, uh, we need to assume uh, some sort of the UV completion because, uh, in some sense, uh, only from the IR Lagrangian, the charge is string 
every concept. So, uh, but uh, we, we, we want to discuss the, uh, the charge leakage. And uh, in order to discuss the leakage, we need to uh, assume some sort of the uh, UV Lagrangian. So, so, in that sense, I'm not sure uh, what it, the phenomenological consequence or uh, how large the photon abundance is, but uh, in general, uh, I, I, I guess that, uh, that there, there must be uh, some sort of the, uh, the photon abundance and also, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, also basically our, the rest of our paper, the, the uh, primordial magnetic field analysis is also applied uh, even for such unknown new theory. Okay. Uh, it's a bit confusing because there you have a UV completions. Mm -hmm. There is no fermions that are relevant to what uh, to this discussion, and uh, so I mean, how can it be that there is uh, charge carriers which are fermions which move along this string? This is confusing. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Actually, uh, for the uh, well, so do you mean that? For the action string, there should no uh, fermion. There, there yeah, seems in no. In string theory, the, 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 the carving age uh, tilde doesn't arise from a loop of fermions. Is ah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Effective yeah. Out. Even in that case, even in that case, uh, still uh, there is uh, a, a uh, there is some sort of uh, degree of freedom. For example, say uh, 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 say chiral boson on the string. And that, that chiral boson can carry the charge. Uh, maybe okay. If if I say uh, more, if I use more e uh, familiar example, probably you can suppose say a heterotic string. Uh, for the case of a heterotic string, uh, if you use the uh, fermionic construction, the uh, fermion on the wild sheet carry the, uh, the charge of the SO32, for example. But if you use the, uh, the bosonic construction, the chiral boson uh, can carry that, or chiral boson operator can carry that uh, SO32 charge. So uh, in, in that case, uh, anyway, there is some degree of freedom which carries a uh, charge on the string. But I mean, your argument is saying that, uh, okay, if you have a KSVZ, okay, just uh, from long distance, you argue that there is a, uh, you know, that you have a superconductive string with, with fermions that move along the string. Oh, no, no. So ah, sorry, sorry. Uh, no. Difficult in that case. Ah, okay. Actually, uh, no. Uh, probably you refer uh, this slide at, that uh, I'm using case with the model, but I, we do not use, we, at this point, we do not specify any model. We do not say we are using but, the case. That's why I'm confused because you have a theory. so. Here you have just a theory with bosons, so the level of effective action, and yeah. you are yeah, so with fermions. And uh, uh, well, in, the, okay, uh, in the model with fermions, I, I understand, but in the model, in the model based on uh, string construction, uh, there was fermions. No, uh, even even for string construction, uh, once A G G children in interaction exists, mm -hmm. uh, that must leave the anomaly on the string. This is uh, what anomaly in flow states. Uh, this anomaly on the string is solely determined by the IR Lagrangian. So uh, anyway, whenever AGG children interaction exists, uh, the anomaly exists on the string. Mm. And uh, in order to cancel that anomaly, uh, there must be some degree of freedom on the string which produced mm. anomaly. So uh, it, for the case with model, that degree of freedom is the fermion. But then if you take other model, uh, probably you will get the other degree of freedom. For example, if you take the uh, string construction, maybe you can obtain the, uh, the chiral boson as this charge degree of freedom. You may also get the, the uh, film. I mean, to be honest, uh, to be precise, that uh, the, there is no distinction between boson and fermion in two dimension. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, see. Anyway. I see. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Mm, boson, yeah. Well, are there other questions? Can I ask a question? Oh, yes, please. You. Uh, so in this superconduct, superconducting string, uh, the QCD is also, uh, so the, this string contains the QCD currents also, right? 
Yes. And so, uh, taking into the QCD current, the, does the volton size change or not? Uh, I think it doesn't. Uh, it, the order estimation is more similar uh, because uh, typically the size of the Volton is uh, smaller than the QCD scale. So uh, the QCD is uh, kind of a perturbative on the, uh, the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. loop. So uh, that doesn't change uh, much. Okay. And uh, one, one more thing. Um, this, is, maybe this is a stu stupid question. So, I mean, uh, let's assume that there are two straight strings, two, uh, two superconducting strings, and, uh, uh, and they have uh, electric current and electric charge, and uh, there is an electromagnetic interaction between the two strings. And, uh, but there is also a bulk current, a transient current. So is, uh, does it, play a uh, role as a interaction between the strings? I, I, I think I, anyway, uh, in almost any case of the uh, phenomenological in interest, the uh, current is much smaller than the, uh, the FA. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. for example, I take the thermal fluctuation, but oh. in that case, the current is over the temperature. But uh, basically, the string dynamics is determined by its tension. Uh, mm -hmm. the FA. So uh, uh, the the basically the uh, such small current cannot modify the uh, the dynamics of order FA. So how uh, how about considering primordial magnetic field? Is it even with the primordial magnetic field? I mean, if basically if the current exceeds FA. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, in, in short, uh, the pr current doesn't exceed a phase. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Right. So, I don't see other questions. So, I thank uh, both the speakers.